Wholesale is Rob Short, Wholesaler Mastermind. And you may be thinking to yourself, Rob, you're thinking, what do you have besides this amazing podcast? And I'm so glad you asked. Wholesaler Masterminds has an assortment of product and services all designed around the art, science, and lifestyle of wholesaling. As an example, we have coaching services designed to help you power wash your practice, whether you have two years or 22 years. We'll offer you speaking live engagements at divisional or national sales meetings. Our scheduling service has dedicated professionals trained in the art of getting you more appointments, wholesaler mastermind schedulers. Our speakers bureau brings you amazing speakers and processes to get better return on investment out of those speakers. And finally, our partnership, our newest partnership with Alego. If you have Alego and want to get the wholesaler masterminds channel on your Alego platform, please let us know. Wholesaler masterminds Happy to bring you this podcast and so much more. Wholesaler Masterminds, the art, science, and lifestyle of wholesaling. Wholesalers, here's, here's some questions for you to ponder, information for you to think about. Do you, know, do you know that during this podcast, roughly 120 Americans will die, leaving $36 million to be inherited? And during that same period, during this podcast, 12 Canadians will die, leaving approximately $3 million to be inherited. My, my question for you today is, what are the implications of this for you, your advisors, and our industry? Welcome to the only podcast on the planet dedicated to exploring the art, science, and lifestyle of wholesalers and their leaders. This is the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. I'm your host, the founder of Wholesaler Masterminds, Rob Shore. Wholesalers, welcome back to the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. Our guest today is Dr. Tom Deans. He's an author, the author of Every Family's Business, 12 Common Sense Questions to Protect Your Wealth. It was selected by the New York Times as one of the top 10 books business owners should read. With more than a million copies in circulation, Every Family's Business is the best-selling family business book of all time. The sequel... Willing Wisdom is also an international bestseller that answers the question, how prepared is your family to inherit? His research and thought leadership on the subjects of wealth transfers, preparing heirs and family dynamics has made him an in-demand speaker. Since the release of his first book in 2008, Tom has delivered more than 1,000 paid speeches in 20 countries. He has also provided advanced training to advisors employed by the world's largest financial institutions, law firms, and accounting firms. Dr. Deans is also the founder of Willing Wisdom Index, and it's a new digital client engagement tool for advisors to use with prospects and clients to answer the question, how prepared is your family to inherit? It's also used by advisors as a sales wedge to pry high net worth clients from other advisors who offer no estate planning support. Dr. Deans is a frequent guest commentator on the subjects of business succession planning and internet generational wealth transfer. He has appeared on all major national TV and news shows and has been featured in the New York Times, Entrepreneur, Fortune, and Wall Street Journal. Dr. Deans, welcome to the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. Rob, I got to tell you, I'm exhausted just listening to that introduction. You know, that was a whole... Go ahead. It makes me weary. It makes me weary well, you, about you wrote, how long you, I've been doing this. I know. You wrote the darn thing. We should just shorten it up, shouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a fun ride. Oh, so wholesalers, I invited uh, Dr. Deans to be with us today. He's allowed me to call him Tom. And the reason we're here today is, is intergener- intergenerational wealth transfer, generational wealth transfer, a white hot topic, a white hot topic that advisors are screwing up monumentally. The other reason I brought him on is I want you to be thinking about your nest egg. Yeah, you see, I know what you know, and perhaps it's a dirty little secret out of our business, but this is one lucrative occupation that we engage in. And my question is, how well are you preparing with your own assets? So I I want you to think about this podcast through two different lenses. The lens of how you provide assistance to financial advisors to learn more about generational wealth transfer so that 60 odd percent of their assets don't slip out of their book. And then the other lens I want you to look through is, how do you think about dollars changing hands, God forbid, upon your death, hopefully at the ripe old age of 90 plus. 
So here's, here's a question for you, Tom. Why are advisors screwing this up so royally? You know, we had a brief conversation yesterday and it's like, it, this isn't a, a, a poorly kept secret. What, what, what's going on here? The, they're, they're messing up for the same reasons that their clients mess up. They're not exempt from life. They are, they're like other people. They, they eschew this subject. They don't like thinking about it. Half, half the wholesalers listening to this call don't have a will. 125 million American adults don't have a will. Four U.S. presidents died without a will. Two are lawyers. There are, we can, we can go all day on this. Four, four U.S. presidents died without a will and two were lawyers. Yeah. That's, that's inspiring. It's, so, it, it's, you know, it is, this is the last great taboo. You know, wholesalers have helped, you know, their advisor clients talk about retirement planning, cash flow planning, all sorts of bolt-on subjects that, you know, add value to the client relationship. This this one has gone completely untouched, underdeveloped. It is such a great opportunity for wholesalers to help advisors really differentiate their offering. And I'll tell you, the need is acute. It is monumental because never in the history of the planet have we left so much money to the next generation. In fact, at the very moment in time that we're leaving huge inheritances, record inheritances, we're writing fewer and fewer wills. So how do you square that circle? Why aren't they doing it? One, if we talk about wills, Rob, even in this phone call, if we talk about wills long enough, we're inviting death. We're going to die sooner than we would had we just left the subject alone. It is full of superstition. It's full of some really strange attitudes and values. Even those who do have wills are really reluctant to share the contents of those wills with their intended beneficiaries. So this is culturally informed. So you can see why wholesalers kind of leave this subject alone at their peril. It's why advisors leave it alone with their clients, and it's why clients leave it alone with their family. The reality is it's a massive, massive, exciting market opportunity. Let, let's, let's kind of peel the onion on this a little bit. Um, I want to start with, uh, let me ask you this question. So as I process this, so, so wholesalers, this, this, by the way, if you, if you ever wondered what a peerless value proposition PVP could be, you know, I have clients at wholesaler masterminds that use generational wealth transfer programs as developed by their firms, uh, as their branding mechanism, their peerless value proposition. How do I begin to dive into this conversation with a financial advisor? What will entice them, Tom? What, you know, I, I realize the statistics are, are mind-numbing and maybe just too mind-numbing. How do I begin yeah. to get an advisor to wake up to this? What do I say to them? How do, how do I begin to position this? It's, you know, it's getting the advisors to understand that they can, they can start valuable conversations and add incredible value to their clients and their family relationships. This whole threat with fee compression, the whole threat as a result of overregulation, this really is an, a market opportunity for, for wholesalers to remind advisors that if they can insert themselves into the families of their client, and I'm talking about not every client, I'm talking about their top 10 clients, they need to make themselves absolutely indispensable, not just to the client, but to their client's broader family. That's how we're going to get at that 66% number that you referenced. That's how we're going to make sure that 60%, more than 66% of assets uh, actually stay with that advisor after their, their lead client dies, right? So we know that inheritors just bolt for the door. They go, that was, that was my mother and father's advisor. I don't know that dude. I, that's what I'm saying. That's my call to action today is to get wholesalers to teach and remind and educate and give them the tools and resources to remind their clients that <laughs> they're as good as their relationship with the next generation. And so facilitating family meetings, using tools, using templates, using meeting agendas, whatever, to get themselves facilitating these family meetings, that is how you're going to keep the money, intergenerational money under management. All right. So I, I want to talk later about the Willing Wisdom Index, which you were gracious enough to provide me access to. And, and I'll, I'll speak, of course, quite kindly about it because it was very instructive. But I, I want to talk about I want to talk about some of, of the, um, uh, the mystique around money and death. 
you know, yeah. not, not a friendly topic, but hell, we're all going to die. And this audience all has some money. So what, what is it? What is it that makes it so freaking hard to talk about money as it relates to death? There is a, a stream of academia called family systems theory. It looks at how families work. And the central tenet of family system theories is that families, by and large, repeat. We, we do what our parents did. And so for many of the people listening to this call, you, they may have some money, but there's a very good statistical chance that their parents didn't have money and that the subject of estate planning or wills just wasn't all that important. You know, you really don't have to worry about death and estate planning if there's not a lot to divide. So there is a whole swath of the current high net worth market that is looking backwards into their own cultural history, and there's nothing there to guide them. So family systems theory would suggest that they will do what their parents do, and that is die intestate. Or they'll have a will, and they'll do what their parents did, which was, I'll give you a clue. Oh, I mean, it, it was, it was a, a, a secret to all. And, and when the contents were revealed, and we'll talk, I want to talk more about this as well. When the contents were revealed, you know, the first started flying in some cases, but, Absolutely. right? Because Betsy didn't know that she wasn't getting mom's brooch. And I mean, the, yeah. the list goes on and on. Absolutely. So we have families to this day, the vast majority, learning about the full, their full entitlement uh, at a, in a lawyer's office, grieving the worst time. And the questions start flying to the lawyers. Why did they do that? Why did they do this? Why did they leave that asset class to my sister and give me cash, which are treated differently in, you know, from a tax point of view? All of this chaos is unleashed, and the lawyer is sitting there. You can't really read his mind, but I can. He's sitting there rolling his eyes going, oh, my God. Here we go again. I do not understand why we are keeping our will secret. The big audacious idea in Will and Wisdom in the book is trying to connect this idea of late in life care to the act of estate planning. And I make the argument that, in fact, my research showed that the more transparency and clarity around an estate plan, the more late in life care that that person received from their family. We are living. We are living longer. Well, I don't, I, we wait, 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 dying, wait, wait, Tom. I don't. I, I, I don't want to go past that because that's a super, super interesting point for the very last words that you said that I cut off, which is we're all living yep. longer. We're all dying at a much more ripe age. I heard you say, correct me if I'm wrong, that if I am more uh, efficient and organized in my estate planning today. 20 years from today, 30 years from today, I probably have a better outlook for my care as, yeah. I, as I approach the great divide. Precisely. Why is that? It's, it's, Why is count, that? it's counterintuitive. Historically, we've thought the more secrets that we have, in other words, our family are, are not dumb. They know that we have a home, we've got investments, we have surplus, uh, we have surplus wealth. And so we're going to keep them guessing. And the, the more secrets and the more guessing there is, the more likelihood that we're going to get some good care from at least one of our children. That is the current and predominant thought process. So you're saying you're saying it's 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 a uh, it's a carrot. Absolutely, and it doesn't work. It absolutely doesn't work. It it simply lets families down. It creates incredible chaos, and the courts are plugged with litigation of families fighting over over wills where the balance of equality or even fairness were tipped to the advantage of one family member who provided more late in life care than a sibling, another sibling. All I'm saying in the book is have a family meeting, whatever you decide, disclose it. And, and then don't have your siblings project their dissonance on each other when you're gone. Have them project it on, their, on them now and deal with it. I'll tell you right now, wills that are discussed and communicated and translated in, in openness, uh, in family meetings repetitively, those are not capricious wills. Those are, those, are, those are wills that are thoughtful. They're not going to be challenged on the basis of undue influence or, or, or incapacity. Someone was clear-minded. They had a family meeting. It was facilitated. There were minutes. Those wills are bulletproof. That's the, that's the gift to the family. And, wills and, that can't be challenged. And, and it should be stated here, wholesalers, that uh, you might be thinking what I was originally thinking when I heard wills. This isn't just about wills, and it's not about creating wills or how to create wills or how to write a will. And will right. is 
is um, uh, synonymous in this case with trusts. Absolutely. Uh, so we're talking about we're talking about the mechanism of moving money from people to people. Is that a fair I'm, statement? I'm glad I'm, I'm glad you clarified that. Absolutely, I use wills and trusts interchangeably. What I'm talking about is the transition of wealth, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whatever whatever legal form it takes. It's bringing that clarity and around the structures, whether it is a will or a trust. It's bringing that certainty and communicating that to your intended beneficiaries that is going to show up in the quality and quantity of care that you receive. It's a, it's a, it's a funny idea, and it's really interesting to watch, um, especially business owners who've got an operating business, to see the response. There's just so much chaos and confusion, particularly when they've concentrated their wealth in one operating business and not communicated in, you know, to the larger family how that asset's going to transition. It's like a full contact sport in the event uh, that there's more that, that there's secrets. They need to bring this clarity. And my let's come back to the original point: wholesalers that can remind advisors to really insert themselves into those family dynamics. As terrifying as that seems, that's where they need help. No, I I I, I couldn't agree more. But I got some other questions for you because th- these are questions that that. And again, wholesalers, I said, I want you to think about this through the lens of how you're going to help the advisor. I want you to think about this through your own lens, how you're going to handle your own dollars. How do you, how do you handle the uh, behavioral ramifications of what becomes or what uh, uh, comes after the family meeting, right? So, so yeah. I, I tell, I tell uh, teenager Janie, you know, 16-year-old teenager Janie in the family meeting, or maybe, you know, 19-year-old uh, Janie, the college uh, sophomore, that, you know, in the family meeting, she's now privy to the fact that, you know, a third of my estate, $250,000, whatever the magic number is, will be hers. Mm-hmm. How do you begin to, to modulate or, or otherwise uh, prepare for any behavioral shift that takes place? I mean, one of the extremes is, you know, they know that daddy's got a bunch of money based upon where we live and what we drive and the summer house and everything else. So it's, you know, it's reasonable to think that when daddy dies, I'm not going to have to work as hard. I mean, how do we address some of that stuff? Well, it's addressed, it's addressed in the book, and it's addressed in the family meeting. So one of the very first items that a family would address is a family mission statement that talks about what the family meeting is attempting to, uh, to achieve. And part of that is confidentiality. So, um, I mean, I've, I've been a speaking resource in dozens and dozens of family meetings, and you almost always see that up front at the very first agenda item. And so, and, and there's also a very clear statement that, you know, if I die tomorrow, you you may inherit four million dollars. But if I live to 103, that four million may be ground down in long term care. So, but we don't know when we're going to die. But the family meeting is all about preparing heirs for um, you know uncertain eventualities that could happen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... you see, you see, you see the context. Oh. the gift is being the gift is is being laid bare, but it's given context. No, that's we, a gift. That, it's so interesting what you just said because the the, the first notion is you know the beneficiary thinking hot damn but then this the quick follow-up is and if i live to 103 uh, you know all bets are off because i'm not exactly going to stop spending when i get to be 80 90 and 100 that's right that's right i i, I watched my grandmother die in uh, 2011 she she required we spent two million dollars in after tax money for 10 years two million dollars two million dollars uh, for a high quality of in-home care, I, there's just there's a whole generation that is completely underestimating the cost of living long. Le- and again, if those conversations and those costs can be facilitated by an advisor, well, think of all the products that fall out of the tree. At, as you're not there talking about financial products and insurance, but boy, oh boy, does that stuff ever become apparent when the family starts talking about where that money is going to come from? Yeah. All right, let's sh- let's shift gears because uh, we want to uh, efficiently and effectively use our time today. And I need to, to uh, discuss with you the Willing Wisdom Index, the Willing Wisdom Index wholesalers. As I said, Tom was gracious enough to give me access to this. Uh, if you're looking, and this is not a paid endorsement, trust me on this, uh, if you're looking for a tool to help unlock this kind of conversation with a financial advisor, uh, perhaps you take this uh, Willing Wisdom Index uh, Q&A, get your own report generated and show them the power of the report. But but I'm, I'm doing it an immediate disservice. Uh, Tom, tell us about it. How did it come to be? What's the purpose of it? What's it supposed to do? Look, I was getting frustrated. I do 100 events a year. I'm touching, I don't know, maybe 20,000 people a year in my audiences. I just... I, 
I needed a digital tool that can be scaled, that, that basically took the IP from my book and put it into an interactive digital tool. It's sold as a subscription service to advisors. They, uh, they hand out access codes to clients and prospects who take eight minutes and get a 20-page report. It reveals the gaps in their estate plan. And the report produces the name of the advisor on the front page, so it's branded. It's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful gift. Oh, or you can hand out a coffee mug for the same price. <laughs> or a sleeve of golf ball. I do not understand. If I get another sleeve of golf balls or another pen from another advisor, I'm going to scream. What is give the... me something? Give me something that you can educate me with. Teach me something. What is the cost? That's what this. What is the cost for, for, for a wholesaler? Because I, I didn't really look. You were gracious enough to give me a link. What do we do with wholesalers that yeah. want to do their own, get a report, and maybe use it as a vehicle to show advisors? Is is there? Yeah, it's ten. It's ten dollars an access code. Okay. Okay. Ten dollars is going to yield a twenty-page report, personalized report with their name on it, showing um, what what they need to do in order to raise their score and prepare their family to inherit. It's a it's a lovely gift. And, and we're gonna we're gonna link this up in the show notes. But what is the website address for the index? It, it's real simple: willingwisdom.com. 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 Wholesalers. I, I took it for me. Uh, I actually was uh, disappointed in my score. I, I think my affairs are, are reasonably in order more than the average person, uh, and yet my score was terribly average. So I, I have work that I need to do in certain pockets to improve uh, how I'm preparing for what's supposed to happen uh, in the event that this show doesn't get done next week because a bus ran me over. <laughs> I'll, bet, I'll bet you you scored higher than Prince. I- <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sad. That's unfortunate. Three four hundred million dollar estate, no will. My uh, question is, who was advising that dude? I know it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Wholesalers, I, I hope today has been uh, a surface scratching endeavor to get you thinking, thinking about a few things: how are you going to develop your own peerless value proposition, your PVP, and if you choose to go down the path of generational wealth transfer, then this is a great informational gathering path for you to go down. Is using Dr. Dean's insights and information. Secondly, I want you to be thinking about your own pile of money. What are you doing with it? How are you prepared? How are you setting yourself up intergenerationally, and 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 ultimately, how are you helping advisors see the light of day? whether it's your PVP or just a, a, a sidebar conversation about how they're going to do better work with their best clients to make sure that assets do not run out of their book like a faucet at a certain point of inflection. Dr. Deans, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Rob, it, uh, it's been a pleasure to put the fun back in funeral. Wholesalers, come back. You've been waiting to say that, haven't you? Wholesalers, come back next time for another episode of the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. You'll find all of our content at wholesalermasterminds.com and the podcast can be found at iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. Play.